I'm here in the Power Automate Maker Portal, and I want to show you how you can continue your analysis with process mining using the desktop application. You can get to the desktop application by going to process mining on the left hand navigation, and you'll see an option to download the application from the landing page once you get into the process mining section. You can also find it when you're in a process that you've been analyzing with the web application in the Maker Portal you'll see that there's a download process mining app that you can select and it will begin the process of installing the desktop application. As the desktop application loads, you want to make sure that you're in the right environment and change this if you're not in the right environment. The right environment is the one that you started analyzing the process in in the Power Automate Maker portal. You'll see a list of the processes that you have available to continue analysis in the desktop application. You'll see here that I have the sample accounts receivable process analysis loaded, as well as the PR to PO. You'll notice that the PR to PO only has a default, whereas the other one has discounts and general. These are views that you can have of the process, and you can create multiple views in the desktop application. I'm going to go ahead and load the default view for the PR to PO. You'll notice as this loads up, you have access to the process map, as well as several other tools on the left-hand navigation. On the right-hand side, you have a customized panel that you can customize various things, like how many activities to show, what percentage of the paths. You can configure the clustering attributes. And these are all other things that you can customize on it, as well as the process context, which lets you configure things like business rules, map, the hierarchies, categorize the cases, and just the general settings for the process that you're analyzing. At the bottom of the screen, you can see that there are 100% of 12,736 cases. This is important because as we apply filters later on, this will show a subset that we've filtered down, and this gives us some indication of what we're looking at in the process map. Similar to what we saw in the web application, you can zoom in on the process map and navigate around to see different information on the process map. You can create filters. By adding a filter, you can filter on attributes, edge variants, metrics, sequences, end events, all in the idea of getting a subset of the overall cases that you've ingested for a particular analysis. You'll see at the top the view selector. You'll see I'm on the default view and it's unsaved. As I make changes, add filters or do other analysis, I can save that view. In fact, I can also save the view as a different view, allowing me to have two different views of the same process that I'm analyzing. This is important when we get into the process compare feature of the tool. We can compare against two different views in the desktop application. We also have available to us statistics that give us a high level overview of the process and allow us to look at the details of what make up different parts of it as we look to understand the specifics about our case that we're analyzing. You can also go to root cause analysis, variance, process compare, and use these modules to go do deep analysis of the process, as well as you can also create custom metrics and business rules that allow you to do things like highlight things that are out of your thresholds that you've indicated. In general, you can use the desktop application to continue the analysis of a process that you started in the Power Automate Maker portal and perform deeper analysis of the details of that process. I'm here in the Power Automate Maker portal, and I'm going to use process mining to analyze a process. I'm going to find process mining in the left-hand navigation, and if I don't see it there, I can add it by going to More and adding it from the additional items. I'm going to go ahead and select Process Mining. From here, I have multiple options on how to create a new process. I can start here and start it from blank, which is what I'll do in a second. I can use one of the sample processes to get in and quickly explore process mining and see how it works. Or I could use one of the templates that are available that will help map my data quicker for getting started. I'm going to go ahead and choose Start Here. Now it's going to ask me to give a name for my process and choose whether I'm doing process mining or task mining. If I'm doing process mining, it's going to import data. If I'm doing task mining, it's going to use recordings. We're going to do process mining. So I'm going to name my process PR to PO. I'm not going to provide a description because it's not required, but you can provide one if you'd like. 
Now I can choose two options of how to provide the data. I can choose to use the data flow, which is what I'll do here in a second, or I could choose to use Azure Data Lake. Azure Data Lake is more flexible and provides some better refresh options that you can use. We'll talk about that more in the course. Let's go ahead and continue. Now I'm in the first step of four to connect to my data, and it's loading Power Query where I can select the data source that I want to use. I could use Excel, SQL Server, SharePoint, Dataverse, or even a text CSV file, which is what I'll go ahead and do for this example. Now I could pull this from SharePoint, or I could simply choose to upload a file, which is what I'll do for right now. I'm going to choose my CSV file that I've preloaded on my desktop. Now I'm ready to move on to step three of four. In this step, I'm seeing a preview where I can prepare my data for ingestion into process mining for analysis. This is where I want to preview the data and make sure it looks okay and all the columns have been parsed as I would expect it. I have the right dilemma that is being used for the data. We'll go ahead and move next. Now this is where I could use Power Query to transform my data. For example, if I needed to split columns or combine columns or whatever I needed to do to prepare my data that hadn't been done already before I started the process. We're going to leave it the way it is and go ahead and move next. Now the final thing I need to do before I analyze the data is go ahead and indicate my case ID, activity, start date, and any other fields that I want to map. I'm going to go ahead and map case ID first activity and my event start date and in fact I'm going to go ahead and map my event end date also but I could go through here and map other event and case level data as was appropriate for the process I'm trying to analyze when I'm done I'll go ahead and select save and analyze this will start the process of process mining ingesting the data and analyzing it so we can start our process mining analysis Okay, our analyzing of the data has completed. We can go ahead and start reviewing the map as well as the other KPIs that have been created for us by the analyzing of our ingested event log data. A good place to start is with Copilot. Over here on the right hand side, I'm going to actually ask Copilot to summarize my process. Copilot gives me an overview of my process, telling me that my process started on September 28th and ended on September 16th, had a total duration of 2,909 days. It gave me a highlight of the different activities that were part of the process, and that kind of gives you an idea of what you're dealing with with the data that you ingested. Now you can also come over and look at the embedded Power BI visual that visualizes the data from the process that you analyze. You can see the process map, which highlights all the nodes in the process for all the different variations. You can see how those connect by the paths between them. We'll be looking at more on how to use the data from that as we go through the rest of the course. On the right side here, we see we have variants. These are all the different variations of our process that exist. You can see that there's some very common ones that are executed multiple times and others that are less frequent. We'll dig into that more when we look at variants later in analyzing the processes. We can see at the top that we have different KPIs, that 21.7 days is the average case duration, and we can see that we have 13,000 cases that were analyzed, totaling 25 activities. Now you can go over to the map, which allows you to see the process map a little bit bigger, and you can move around, you can zoom in, you can click on the different nodes to see data about them, same on the paths between the, the nodes. And we'll look at how to use the data and, and the, understand the differences between the widths of these as we go through the rest of the course. You can also go over to Variant DNA, which will give you a more detailed look at the different variants and the process steps that make up each of the variants. We can see that the most popular one, Variant 1, has two events that are part of it that happen compared to some of the other ones that aren't as popular that have a lot of different events that make up the overall process. We'll dig into more on how to use the variants later on. From here, we could use Copilot to ask more questions about the process, use the process map to explore it more, 
or we could jump into the process mining app and do some deeper analysis using some of the more advanced techniques.